It's technology, Michael. Da, 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 da. There's a three in ten chance of it working. Okay. So we're live. We are live. Apparently, are we live? Apparently, we're live. You'll let us know, Daniel, if you get another device. We have a device. We've spent a few weeks um, trying to work out how to go live and uh, failed at every attempt. So we thought we'd just do it with an iPhone and work up from there. So the audio will be bad, the, the, <laughs> the light, the picture will be bad, um, but at least it's a start, right? It is a start. You can tell that I'm so into this. So the idea was that we were going to stop doing VCQ as a video um, because it takes a lot of production and actually the number of views we get don't really justify it. So, um, However, we do like doing it. So I said to Dan, let's just do it as a podcast, podcast only. And Dan said, no, 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 let's go live. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's go live. So that's what we're doing. Um, Dan should be able to confirm whether we are actually live or not. Fraser seems to think we are. Uh, Hang on. I think we're there. Oh, oh we look, are. check it out. No way. Look at that overexposure on your forehead. <laughs> I can't deal with it. So we are going to work out how to hook up some proper cameras and some proper audio. Um, hello to anyone who's watching. Um, we won't always do it at this time. We will pick a time that makes sense globally. So this is just a test. Uh, we will pick a better time. Perhaps you can let us know in the comments what time works for you. Wow. Cool. What did you miss? Nothing? Who's that? Far out. They are flying through. Okay. Uh, right. Everyone confirm me that we are indeed live. Yeah. Brilliant. So welcome to That Pedal Show VCQ Live. Nice. Nice. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Great. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, Hello, everyone. Um, what will happen is, to begin with, we'll probably answer more questions that we've collated from the YouTube comments than we will off of here. Um, as, time will go, as time goes on, we will stop collecting them off the YouTube comments and we will answer them just off here, probably. I'm not entirely sure how that will work, but... Check it out. Stop. Wow. Who have we got then? Read out some names, Dan. Uh, okay. That's how this works. <laughs> Eugene Wolf, just end up in Australia. Sal Kraut. Jimmy Nam, Rick Smith, Paul... Ke wow. Thanks. Sorry. I can't even read them. They're flying through. Joseph Nichols. Alex Fangini, Josh Moore, Jack Ho, Stuart Tate, uh, Hello, Simon Stuart. Sparks, Kevin Druck, Zach, wow, um, Freak Bros, pick me, pick me, hey Freak Bros, uh, man alive, um, this is nuts, how scary, uh, so Jeff Bannister wants to know how scary is it doing it live for the first time, uh, it's not, a different element not of, not scary at all, yeah, I mean, the scariness on my part is that the iPhone's going to fail. It looks bad and the audio is going to be rubbish. Dude, it looks fine. Yeah, it's all right. I check, mean, out, check out my massive arm. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there, but I think in time there's all sorts of um, possibility for visual gags here. There is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Let's. Should we answer a question or two? Sure. Um, it says, yes. It says here today's VCQ is the first podcast only we've done. <laughs> Because we were going to do it for a podcast, but we're not. We're going to do it live. Um, anyway, it was Friday the 16th of August show. It was the one on the Boss Wazza Tube Amp Expander, mm. which is back there somewhere. And the um, Universal Audio Ox Amp Top Box. Someone's just mentioning my yellow trousers. Dan, I'm, I'm on an anti-jeans campaign at the moment. Dan is eschewing the denim jean in favour of a... And anything else? A yellow trouser. A yellow trouser. A canvas trouser. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring cords back. Yeah. One, one to be fair, one, uh, one, um, one threat of getting older is in the supermarkets they've started selling peony pads. A peony pad. Yeah, which if you have any excess after you've gone to the toilet, it soaks it up, and I'm telling you now. A canvas trouser is your biggest <laughs> giveaway of a little extra, is all I'm saying, all right? Whereas jean, not so much problems. And as you get older, that gets more of a problem, so I'm told. Right. Yeah, so beware the canvas trouser following a toilet trip. Does it start as we mean to go on? Is, have we turned into Andersons? I shall... I, I'm, Just bear I it have in mind. Been, yes, I have been... Uh, Duly, duly noted, I've yeah. been forewarned. Thank you very much. Yeah, peony pads on um, repeat order from Amazon. TPS peony pads. Oh. Okay, finally, let's get to some content, shall we? It was about Friday's show. Um, how many comments have you read, Dan? Were you, were you perusing the comments over the weekend? I was indeed. Yeah, 
I, I noticed you're back on. I know, I've got to get off again. Yeah, One of the yeah, reasons yeah, yeah. we did VCQ is because I started answering all the comments and it makes me actually depressed, would you believe, to answer all the comments. Um, so I stopped doing it, which is why we did VCQ. Um, so I've got to stop doing it again. We now have about 50 uh, suggestions for peeny pad uh, alternatives. Great. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Apparently we will get spammed quite heavily during this as well. That's another problem of live streams. So we need, apparently you need somebody moderating and blocking the spammers is something you're going to need in time when you do a live stream. Okay. Um, Dave Cheddar Kung Pao, when you watch this, he did offer his services. Oh, bless Dave yeah. Cheddar, Cheddar Kung Pao. Anyway, back to the subject of the video. Uh, what's the matter? No, they just keep coming in. Okay. <laughs> One problem for Dan is going to be concentrating on answering questions and reading comments. They honestly, they are going to have to have. Should we do one thing at a time? Or yes. Should yes. We sorry. Do, or, no. No. Or we no, could no. just do this. No. Let's. No. Come on. Let's go through. Let's go through. Um, okay. One of the, okay. So one of the interesting things about Friday's video was, whenever we do anything technology based, there's always a snarky element to the comments. Right. Always. Okay. Workwear Express offering us cheap t-shirts. Um, people get very defensive. Okay. Did you notice that in any of the comments or was that just me? I think you might be a bit more aware of that side of things than I am. Well, what, what I've... What I, what I thought was, was that a lot of people were kind of listing all the reasons why the UA Ox was rubbish. Okay. And why the tube amp expander is really good from a spec point, point of view. Okay. And to me it felt a little bit like a purchase bias justification. Sure. Like when you buy something and it's got to be good because you've bought it, right? Right. And by reading the spec list, you know... You read you read the spec list of your Daewoo basic car, and it's got every extra on it in the world. And then you read it next to the spec list of your Ferrari three five five, which has got nothing on it, just a crazy engine. And you go, "Well, the Daewoo is a much better car, isn't it?" Of course it is, because it's got aircon, it's got a brilliant brilliant media system, it's got leather. You know, the race prepared three five five doesn't even have door handles. Just got a bit of string. So I'm always interested when people compare products purely on the spec list. Because I think it was evident from a lot of the comments that the people that were commenting either hadn't tried mm. or had only tried one. And I'm, by the way, I'm not saying that the Tube Amp Expander is a Daewoo and the uh, Ox is the Ferrari. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that comparing spec lists is dangerous. It is dangerous. But that came through. Yeah, sure. Can I read a couple of these? <laughs> Sorry, just so many people have commented. Go for it. Um, uh, basically, confirming what you're saying. Right. Right? Which is great. Um, Stephen Thomas, it's not your, there's no funny background thing, it's your headphones. Um, uh, Anyway, yeah, look, far out. I mean, it's 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 amazing. I'm I'm heartened that this many people are engaging with us on a eight minutes past twelve on a Tuesday, it's Monday even. Cue all the please. Can you do this at a time that works for the US comments? And we will. We'll look at that. Yeah, sure. Um, we'll try and pick a time that sort of works for the US and the UK. I have no literally no idea idea how we're going to do that, but we'll we'll work it out. Okay. All right. Uh, so where we get up to? Um, I, okay, let's confirm the point. Alex Breyer, Alex Breyer sums up what I just said. He says, um, uh, and Paul Winther and Paul Winther Nudson, the Boss product seems superior in every way. Uh, much better attenuation for live sound, much more flexible for studio work, more functionality overall. The Ox was great, but for the price, they really cut it short in so many areas. Blah 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 blah. Lots of lots of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Price was a massive problem for a lot of people. Right. Come on to that in a minute. Okay. Um, but one thing that a lot of you did say was that one key feature of the boss that really stands it apart from the UA was it has an effects loop. Yes. Which is also, so those 
effects can come out through the cabinet that you're using, which they can't in the ox. And also for the boss's internal effects, again, you can use them that will come out through the cab, which on the UA ox it wouldn't. And that, I think, is why lots of people were saying it makes much more sense for live use because you have that ability with effects loops and mm -hmm. the internal effects. Right. Um, just, sorry, just for people who are saying there's a weird spitty background noise. Um, uh, yeah, no, no idea what that is. That is. We'll investigate that yeah. later. But you can hear us, Yeah. apparently. So We could um, try and unplug the MV88. Uh, uh, do you mind if, if I do that? Because that's what it is. It's the Wi-Fi interfering with the MV88. We may go off the air. We're taking us up. We're taking us Right, have you still got audio? You probably just had a massive crack in the ears. Still got audio? Can you still hear us? Is it worse or better? Has it, has it gone away? Loud and clear, no noise, super clear. Yeah. Sounds fine for me. Okay, here's a live review of the Shure <laughs> MV88 uh, microphone for I, I device. What happens is, if you've got your Wi-Fi turned on and you use that, the Wi-Fi interferes with the mic. Oh, really? Making it... Okay. Not as usable as it would be were you not using Wi-Fi. If your Wi-Fi is turned off, you get far superior audio. Um, but obviously you can't stream because we're streaming via Wi-Fi. Hum is gone, but it's quieter now. Yeah. <laughs> ah. This is why. This is why. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything else. We're just going to get through this one and then we're never using iOS. Audio is down 60%. Very quiet now. Give us a back. So you can either have crackling hum, I think the people have spoken, or that works. All right. Plug the MV88 back in. Yes, put it back, put it back, put it back. It is back. We, right. Are we louder again? We want the hum back. Yeah. Crackling is fine. Better, better, yes, better, better, great, better. Great, better, great, better. great. See, we could have spent days testing this. Okay. Um, okay, so the people that talked about the boss's effects are Midnight Roses, Riley I Low Acura, Low Acura, MWC sixty eight forty nine. I like loud. I like you. Um, Eric A and Aftec Beeblebrox. Some killer names coming through. Aftec Beeblebrox, uh, as in. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh God, now I'm showing my ignorance there, aren't I? Goodbye and thanks for all the fish. Uh, that's the one. So YVIL65 <coughs> says, Hi Mick, um, the Ox also works on a Mac, no need for an iPad. We did speculate that. We said that uh, UA was doing other um, things and it's also it also works on PC, I believe now. Right. So it works on more devices than just an iPad. Yes. Very good. It does. This is an interesting question. Right. This is really interesting. Yuppie. Did you find this harder than usual episode to make? It seemed a bit stiff, mainly because of the constant A, B with different variables. That being, being said, that being said, compared to your usual playing with tones and licks stuff, good and important episode though, the technical execution was difficult without going to a massive editing task. Interesting. I think Simon will be very annoyed that you said it wasn't a massive editing task, yuppie. Right. Because it wasn't a massive editing task. Yeah. Um, did you find it harder than usual to make, Dan? Uh, yes. The Why is that then? Because I feel there's always a compromise when you are, uh, you know, when, you, when you're trying to, um, look, you know, looking at devices like these that are specifically made to work inside a door and with monitors and things and we're so spoilt that we forget to, to get the apps up and loud and get to hear them and plug things into them and see how they react and this was a totally different concept a totally different approach mm. um and yeah for, like for me whenever you do that stuff i do there is stuff that's put in the way of yeah. having good twang that was a point I was going to make. Two points. One is, um, units like this are only uh, only exist because of a compromise situation. So you would only ever use a unit like this if you're in a compromise situation. I.e., if you can't mic a nice loud cabinet, or mm. if you have to play on a silent stage. Same thing. Same problem. Um, or or a quiet stage. So they do offer extra functionality, but the actual core tone. 
compared to a mic on a cab is compromised. It, yeah. it just is. So there's that. That's point one. So yeah, we're not just getting the full glory that we normally get out of the amps. Two, A being stuff is probably the least musical thing you can ever do. Mm. There's no flow, is there? There's no. just no... It's so hard. You never get into it because you're always out of it. Yeah. You're always... Absolutely. You're, the bit of your brain that's trying to listen to the AB is utterly in having any flow. So yeah, it is, those episodes are quite hard to make. Yeah. I wonder if there's a format that would be... that would make it easier. I don't know. Well, like if we played with a band and someone live mixed it or... Mm. So you, so you could be flowing. We get other people to come and do those shows. Yeah, yeah. Ford wig on one. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, great. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Okay. Uh, that was it. that was the. Oh yeah, Yuppie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, David Williams says hi, David. He says agree with Mick. It seems odd to be reamping your valve amp, uh, especially with a solid state amp. Um, as far as the TAE goes, mm -hmm. tube amp expander, but it did sound good. And what alternatives are there? You pointed out you can't crack crank that head in anything other than a huge venue. Um, it, it's focused, sorry, mate. It's focusing on the background. Can you apparently touch? Apparently, if you touch on Mick, should if, we focus on him? If you touch and hold on either me or Dan, it will lock it. I think. Has that done that? No? I don't know. Keep that. Big hand for Fraser today who is uh, touching the iPhone screen. <laughs> okay. Um, um, where do we get to that? Uh, yeah, it was just a general comment on other attenuate as being available yeah and actually do you need all that technology which is what rich jones says do you need the modeling can't you just use a power soak like a bugera ps1 um love the show blah 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 and glicksman guyog and todd m made similar points about other attenuators such as the Friar power station which mm. we use regularly um something else called the ultimate attenuator which i hadn't heard of and uh, just a plain old Variac. So, do you need all the digital stuff? Why why not just use a regular attenuator? It was, but it wasn't about. I mean, the attenuation was a a nice part of it, but it was it was about the. It's all those things. It's the attenuator and the yeah. the, the reamper and all that's the the reamper the, the um, mic modeling all, all modeling. that stuff. It's all that in, in one unit. The fire yeah. is is amazing, which is my favourite. But it doesn't, you know, doesn't have any of that other stuff. No, no, no. It doesn't offer you those direct outputs, does it? For me, um, Andrew Daw summed it up. He he hit the nail on the head as far as my own personal view goes. Aside from the option of still having a big amp if needed, mm -hmm. is there any benefit to attenuating versus just having a smaller amp? Yeah, good shout. And I would argue not. I think if you're going to play quietly. Get an amp that sounds good, quiet. Yeah, but the, I think the idea of attenuating a hundred watt Marshall to silent stage volume is is folly to me. Sure. All I would say, just to play devil's advocate, is if you have if that hundred watt Marshall is your sound, the hundred watt Marshall turned up to six, for example. If that gives you exactly what you need, um, and you want to record that sound at home. Uh, then yeah, that's for me. That's when these things come in, come into their own. But I, I think once you've got it attenuated, it doesn't sound like that hundred watt. Yeah, no, no, true. Anymore. No, no, you're right. But you're right. That's yeah, very true. I, and I think there's probably an emotional attachment to the hundred watt amp as well. You attenuate it down, you're emotionally attached to it because it's your amp. Sure. Maybe there's a feel thing. So yeah, admit, you know, to take your devil, devil's avocado and take a bite out of it. May, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe there is an argument. But I, I actually think, for quiet, if you use a sensitive mic and something like a Pro Junior, mm. it often sounds way better than a blooming oh, yeah, Marshall anyway, yeah, yeah. especially if you're in a compromised room. You yeah. can get a massive sound out of a little amp. Yeah, no, very true. If you mic it nicely. Very but, true. Anyway. Uh, so that ties into Soul Terrain Audio, um, Pepe OAD, and IVPG. 
all of whom just can't get past the prices of said devices. Yeah, the comment was, wow, that's as much as it costs more than my amp. Why would you, why would I ever want that? Yeah, right. Yeah, all right, so I don't know what to say about that, really. Yeah, well, look, I think you've got to put these things in context. If I've got a little studio at home and I'm looking to put some guitar tracks down and I've got my board and I've got specific sounds that I've been working on, if I have an aux there, I don't need the cab, I plug straight into that and I can still use all my outboard gear and it's great. If we've recorded with the aux before, it's great. Same thing with the 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 boss, you know, I can in, in that similar sort of uh, context. Yeah. For me, that's where they shine. Would I necessarily, if I'm recording at a massive studio, I don't think I'd be taking those in. I'd be seeing what mics they have at the studio and using the rooms at the studio and doing yeah, all that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff. But if I'm recording at home, that's where they, I think, are a really good option. Yeah, if yeah, if you can't make noise. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to to plug into a, um, a, a digital multi effects thing that I don't really understand. Those for me, those things I understand. I understand the gain structure because you can add it to your regular rig. Yeah. So everything else is familiar except exactly. the except the loud problem. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. A really, that's a really good way to look at it. Yeah. Perhaps. Um, seeing as we've just turned over onto page two, Dan, what uh, what's happening in the the live world? Uh, man, for lots of people have a lot, lot of love for the trousers, Mick. Yeah, they're yellow. The only people I ever see wearing yellow trousers are like mad old English people, you Thank know? You. Crazy old English gentlemen who drive Range Rovers. I have I have crossed over. Um, right, boy, oh boy. Honestly, the, there's... Uh, what about the Phil X video? Okay. I've got about five videos of other guys for my vlog as well, and today I am recording the last part of the first vlog. I'm going to do that after we finish here. Does I've got that, everything does with that me. include Paul David's, Pete Thorne? Paul David, Pete Thorne. The ones we did in Germany. The ones yeah, okay. we did in Germany. So I've got about five of those I've got to get. But I've got to get the first one done, and right. I've started that first one three times, and every time I've hit a snag, and I've finally worked out how to do it. It's not a technology snag. It's about getting across this... The idea for the first video. So, okay. just to put that in context, it's um, a difficult birth, is what you say. It, it is. It really is. Uh, I'm so. It's about people have been asking me to do a chord vlog, practice vlog. I'm not even sure what to call it yet. But I finally, I finally made a decision on, on how to get the the very genesis of that vlog out. There we go. So it's there. And then once I get the first one, I can get all the other ones done. I'm excited. Right. I'm excited. Very good. Can you get them done for when I'm on holiday? When are you going? Uh, first week of September. Yes, of course. Excellent. Yep. Absolutely. Um, man, funny that everyone wanted that telly that Paul Davids eventually bought. It was an amazing guitar. It was a great guitar. Absolutely amazing. What was it? It was a. It was basically a thin line, imagined had it existed in '52. So it was a. It was like a no caster thin line. Or maybe even a 52 telly thin line. But yeah. It was really cool. Oh, so really good. Really cool guitar. So good. Uh, our guy Johnson says he must have got his pants from the Big Banana near Coffs Harbour. I went to the Big Banana when I was a kid. What is that? It's uh, In Australia, we have this... We have, uh, we have the Big Banana, the Big Crab, the Big Pineapple. Just these... <laughs> you drive for 400 kilometres and then you just see this cr massive crazy thing that some guy who spent too much time in the sun thought it'd be a really good idea to make the big cow yeah, another one. Just big stuff. Just big stuff. And right. you'd walk inside and it'd be this fiberglass thing that um, none of the fiberglass has been cut off inside and kids are breathing it in. Classic <laughs> Australian attractions. Um, yeah, it just it just reminds me of, of my childhood. We'd, we'd go to this big something, you know. On, on and the there was a big weekend. banana. There was a big banana that you could walk inside the big banana. I that was brilliant. cleaning and uh, cleaning and lubricating the chain on my bike at the weekend. Right. And uh, I'm I've cleaned it off. Use kerosene to clean the chain. Do you know that? Really? Yeah. I don't have any kerosene, but apparently that's one of the best motorcycle chain cleaners for anyone out there. Uh, and then you spray on the once you've got all that off, you spray on the waxy lube stuff. And um, I'm thinking, wow, this smells of bananas. And I look at the can, and it's yeah, banana fragranced. Wow. He's not listening. No, no. <laughs> kerosene, banana flavoured, banana flavoured kerosene. Is that right? Um, 
I, I can't do... No, I, this is... <laughs> I knew this would happen. Dan physically I'm sure, can't do two things at once. The thing once, is, so. I'm trying to keep an eye on the comments, but the, honestly... So we need you, a better way to here do Here you go, because you have oh, to look at them, because they are absolutely... I mean, we just need a better way to do it, don't we? We need a big screen with all the comments coming in. Daniel Murray says, Parker Guitars... Uh, for me, uh, now you've gone off the screen, so thanks. Um, Stuart Tate... Um, Jet fuel is a good greaser for chains. That's really interesting. Why? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to get some out of the Lear jet. <laughs> Siphon it off. Um, Evan Ward says, add activated. Great. Um, Oran Zilberstein says, I am pedal freak. Just learning the best sound I get is straight into my AC15. How can I live without that? Well, interestingly, there is a question about that coming up. Okay. About pedal gain and non-pedal gain. Um, these are gold top pants, actually. Uh, says Lucas Zembrowski. Nice. Like it. Zembrowski. Sorry, I can't. Uh, Charvel channel. Uh, my fiance says, ooh, it's those nice pedal guys. That's from Matt Watson Music. I'm Matt. Hello, Matt's fiance. Good luck for your eventual nuptials whenever they happen. Lovely. Um, yeah, right. Um, one, you're, two, you're a lot better at that than I am. One, two, three, Scruffy Dog says, does using attenuators like this have any long-lasting effect on your amp other than wearing out valves quicker? Oh, that's a good question. Quite a few people ask that question. No, it won't. So, apart from the valves and the transformer... I mean, it's just as it, it's working. As long as the amp is designed to be able to work at those sorts of levels, then no. Um, you, yeah, you push anything harder, its lifespan is going to shorten. Yeah. But there's plenty of amps that have been pushed really hard for 50 years and with regular maintenance and all of that yep. are kept in tip top working order. Yep, that's right. So, yeah, it's not like a valve amp isn't designed to. Well, actually, <laughs> that's a, an interesting point. Valve amp isn't designed to be pushed into overdrive. 24 hours a day, but it is what they're good at and what they've been doing for uh, for all these years. So I think it, I think you're all right. Like you say, you you will wear valves quicker. Perilous Temple just said, bought my eight year old his first guitar. He wanted a red red like Dan's, so I got him a Tully Squire. Awesome. awesome, very good. That's such a big day isn't it, when you get your first guitar. Yeah, do you remember yours? I do. Yeah. Yeah, first electric guitar, KSG copy. Have we had this conversation before? Yeah. We have, haven't we? Because yeah. mine was also an SG copy. I don't think it was a K. Might have been. And then we both had Kramers. We both had Kramers. And then I saw Danish Pete put up a video, uh, a picture over the weekend. <laughs> Wonder how that will go down through the iPhone mic. Um, <laughs> loads of people on the way to an audiologist at this moment. Um, Danish Pete put up one, and he had his Kramer too. Really? Yeah, yeah. So we all had That's Kramers. That's hilarious. Um, David Downs, if anyone has any suggestions, please help me out. My ears had to go down loudly. <laughs> Very loud. See, this is what you get. What you get with editing is finesse. It was bloody loud. RIP headphone users. Sorry. <laughs> so we need an attenuator for the horn, don't we? <laughs> I wonder if we can find a manual one somewhere. I thought we had hats. Ah, oh, no, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that's in a horn attenuator. Right. Uh, Adam, Adam Miller. Hang on, no, we haven't, we haven't got to David Downs Oh, yet. haven't we? Okay. Right. If anyone has any suggestions, please help me out. I'm unfortunately in the camp of silent stages. Ah, oh, David. I, just, I actually can't believe this exists, and I know that it does, and I know that it exists widely, but I think I think there is genuinely a problem in the world if stages are silent. What does your drummer do? They, I know they sit behind big shields of perspex. It goes clack, 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 But that, when the sound of the clack yeah. is louder... It's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Sorry. Anyway, David, we're sorry to hear you're in the world of a silent stage. I've used Helix for about a year now, and it's a wonderful tool, but I really miss my amp and pedals playing live. Seems like the Boss could be the perfect for me to dive back into the analogue world for live playing. The only drawback is the potential loss of stereo effects using one mono head. Obviously, I could bring two heads and two load boxes, 
However, that could be a burden logistically. Could the Boss X tube amp expander be the solution? Well, you've said it. You would need two because mm. it's mono. Mm -hmm. Tricky. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to be potentially contentious here, Dan, and say once you're in the world of a silent stage, everything in ears, I think you've lost it anyway. Mm. So that I, the, the chance of getting that feel back and that feedback through the... I just I think it's gone anyway. Yeah. Which and, and I probably sound very negative about that. Um, it's going to be different anyway. And so Solomon you may says, as well you may as well embrace it being different and use the best technology for that kind of world. Yeah. Andy Solomon says, guys, what is a silent stage thing? I've never heard of it. Really? Um, yeah. People have to play with no sound on stage. Yeah. Just so everything is silent and it's they just hear everything through any monitors. And it, what happens is the the only sound then coming out is the sound through the PA. Yeah. that the Sanger has complete control over. Yeah, so it does give the front of house ultimate control. Um, but the thing is, you with those gigs, right, if you go to see a band that you really want to see and you've got great tickets and you're right at the front of the stage and you, you can hear them walking around on stage and you, you can, you know, oh, it's it's so not rock and roll. No, it's you know. Silly. But anyway, sometimes that's what you've got to do. And yeah. if you've got it, I mean, it's a really interesting thing to look at. How is there any way to get that feel back? I, I was doing, I was, I was helping out uh, the guys from Snow Patrol probably a year, 18 months ago, and they're going on tour. And they, they wanted to have all these amps and stuff. And, <laughs> Uh, and do it properly, but the, w one of the issues was the singer. Um, it was they had to change the way they'd be doing it. They had to be really quiet on yep. stage. Yeah. And they're doing massive stadiums. Enormous domes. Right. And we looked at um, you know things like those pressure pads that you stand on, try and get some feel and stuff back into it. It's really, really tricky. Yeah, Paddy, the um, bass player, Paddy Blight, I don't know if you ever watched this, Paddy, but um, hello, Paddy, our awesome bass player in a TPS band, but mm. also does lots of other stuff as well. He took to wearing one of those gaming vests that that vibrates. <laughs> yes, the gaming vest thing. <laughs> To get a bit of thump into his chest. There are some comments we can't read out. You can read them all in the list. Is all we're saying about that. Yeah. So it. anyway, it's yeah, a yeah, it's yeah. a dilemma that a lot of people face. Yeah, it's tough. It would it's be, really tough. Yeah, and doing a show on it would be actually be really tough as yeah. well. Um, yeah. So anyway, but you know, I, I often say very didactic things when uh, when we're presented with this kind of thing. You know, I say things like, "If I have to play on a silent stage, I don't want to do the gig." Yeah. I'll just get a bike and go racing because then I can actually have fun. Mm. But then some people, it's not about fun for people. It's about a job. It's about work. And then you're into why you do this thing. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, to, to be more philosophical about it, um, music changed, right? Uh, if, you come, if, you, if you go back to the beginning of the 1900s, we get into the 20s and 30s and big band. Mm. Um, the electric guitar comes along in the late 1930s, arguably, but certainly throughout the 40s. And the 50s is when it hits properly in the rock way that we know, mm -hmm. and then into the 60s. And music changes, and the sonic experience of music changes because mm -hmm. of the available technology. It may well be that we are on the end of what we know, and that, that that's going away. That will become a heritage pursuit in the way that steam engines are a heritage pursuit. Although he, he, steam engines aren't really an effective means of um, mass public transportation. The, no. di the diesel engine is considerably better at it than the steam engine. You see, I don't know. So, I... well, and I'm just, I'm just floating it by yeah, yeah. saying that, you know, I know lots of amplifier companies and I know that most of them are having a tough time mm. because people can't play loud anymore. Mm. So does music change as a result, because people are using the available technology. You know, the only reason that Jimi Hendrix sounded like Jimi Hendrix is because there was a Marshall stack, Wah Wah and a Fuzz Face and a Univibe, right? So he used the available technology to change music. Yep. So what would be great 
for all you Kemper and Helix users out there. Could you change music, please? Could somebody change music instead of just following the past? Mm. Instead of just trying to recreate what's already been? Dan and I are really happy with that because we've got these things. So I want to know if music's going to change fundamentally in the way that it has changed throughout history. And maybe that rock and roll is not going to survive in a, in a kind of popular culture kind of way. I, see, you might even already argue that it's already dead in a popular culture way. No, but no. Okay, listen to, listen to Ed Sheeran's new song I heard on the radio this morning. It's awful. You don't like it? <laughs> but doesn't me not liking it doesn't matter. No, no. But It's, but, it's kind of rock, isn't it? Yeah, but it's I, I, I thought it was really cool. I really liked the guitar solo in it. Mm. But it was a big, loud rock song with a guitar solo. That's from Ed Sheeran. That's got to be a Kemper, that guitar solo. It's... Well, there's, it's got a synth aspect into it. Oh, has it? So there's some sort of production thing. However... Sounds very digital to me. But it does sound very digital, yeah. but there's a, there's, you can, there's a synth element to it. Oh, okay. Maybe and there's, I mean, it's not, you know, the, whether or not... It's not, I'm not saying it's a great guitar sound. I just think it's really interesting. Ed yeah, Sheeran yeah, yeah. has brought out this big rock, rock song thing. with a big rock guitar solo. And maybe there'll and be some also, kids that go, wow, rock. If you that? think about think about classical music, cl you know, classical music was the pop of its day. It's now... You can argue more people listen to classical now than ever. Yeah. Um, just because it's become, you know, percentage-wise, yes, it's down. However, there's so many more people out there listening to classical music, and it's it's, you know, it's it's important uh, to give you, you know, to open the, the 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 shutters on your on your ears and 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 taking this massive scope of music. Yeah. If it does change, brilliant. But rock will or the, you know. It'll always be that's, there. That's kind of what I mean. So classical music uh, uh, exists within brackets, right? Right. And it, it, classical music requires some form of orchestra, be it a small one or a big one, so, or a, an ensemble. That's loads of soloists out there doing that okay. thing. <laughs> All right. So it inv involves um, a traditional instrument. Sure. It, or an ensemble. Or, you know, traditionally classical music is usually a small ensemble or an orchestra, isn't yep. it? Yeah, okay. And it requires that. And it hasn't, it hasn't developed beyond that sonically. Okay, right. It's, that is yes, of course. Because if you walked if you walked into the London Philharmonic tomorrow with an electric violin and a wah wah, they would tell you to do one. Sure. And so it exists within its parenthesis, and I think that's that's rock is in exactly the same place. It exists right. within parenthesis, and I would go even further to say that if you take away loud guitars, it's no longer rock. Mm. It's something else, and that's fine. Yeah. That's that's totally cool. That it is something else and it, and it evolves into something else because then music progresses and that's what we should all be happy about. Mm. But you take away those loud guitars, it ain't rock anymore to me. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. And I think that's what you were, what you were probably saying. Right? Yeah. What are people saying, Dan? Because these are controversial <clears throat> opinions. Uh, okay. The movie Amadeus really set the Hawking classical music for me. So it did for me as well. When I was doing my music... Uh, my my study uh, at the conservatorium doing my that thing when I I used to go to the library and I would put on Mozart's Death Requiem in D minor I did that every morning for about three months it is the saddest of it, all keys it is the saddest of all keys <laughs> but oh my word it's the most moving yeah, yeah, piece yeah. of music it's just stunning so yes uh, totally agree. Having having just said there's no rock without electric guitars, there is nothing more rock than an orchestra at full chat. Peter Jessup says, to be honest, the real problem is categorising music. Yeah, and nice. I like that. I like that, Peter. Um, uh, Philip Sarche, Sarge, uh, him, says, speaking of classical, have you ever heard a proper symphony orchestra that shift serum, serious amounts of air? Yes. Just what I said. And they are unbelievable it's such a moving yeah, experience it really is it's an incredibly moving experience um yeah real guitar bass and drums one take best sound ever I don't know about one take <laughs> requires a lot of practice there <laughs> but yeah it is um oh this is interesting batola 20 says can i travel back to the past please i've never played loud that's really interesting isn't that interesting that is really interesting it, de it you know, I meet lots of younger people who've certainly never played a valve amp at any kind of volume, mm. and when they do, it's quite a scary, uh, yeah. uh, quite a scary experience because it's visceral and it's, you know, it's physically moving, and you find that all the things that you can do quietly um, don't really work in that environment, and vice versa. You mm. know, one of the reasons I find it really hard to do this show sometimes 
is if we're playing quite quietly through gear that's not you, you're struggling to connect with, I actually physically can't play the guitar. I can I can yeah, only yeah, play yeah. the guitar properly when it's really loud, and that that's a problem. There's a you know I have I've been having a think about this right, and I think it's like I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be the guitar player I am today if I hadn't have been, my, if my, you know, up to this last 20 years been playing l loud gigs. Not to say that I would, I'd be a better or worse guitar player, but there's certainly it has shaped the way that I play. Yeah. But I can say that the, the learning at the, uh, when I'm connected, I... I'm able to, there's a learning aspect to it and uh, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm freed up to a point where the things become either more melodic or, or whatever. I'm just more connected to it and that carries through. I can take those moments and sort of, and, and build on them. Yeah. If I hadn't have had those loud guitars and that connected experience, it's those moments that I wouldn't have been able to build on. For yeah, example, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could plug in to a Kemper or a Helix now, yeah, and 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 you'd sound great. See a Vin Fuego, he says good night. Oh, that might mean hello, or it might mean good night. But in a, in a, in either way, hello the Vin Fuego, we love your name. Uh, so you could plug into a, a Helix now and do your thing, and 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 you'd you'd still sound great. However, if you had started on that, and that was your, you know, I don't believe that you would have that. The touch sensitivity, no, no, no. The, the, the no chance in the world. You know what I mean? If you'd never played up volume with a band, there's no, you, it, it would be impossible to. Yeah. So the, the but next you can question take is, that experience and you, and you can put that onto a system like that. Yeah. You know, but. So like, the next question is: Is it relevant if it's not ap applicable anymore in terms of if you can't play loud anymore? That's is it, is it even really relevant? Really interesting. To be able yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. You might, oh, we you, need some beers you might, and some some bar snacks. That, this is what this has to evolve into: oh, is Friday night, a couple of beers, and we'll do it for three hours, and it will be great. Um, yeah, Who's I mean, driving? take your um, Uber man. Take your um, take players the the sort of big band and uh, what turned into Django Reinhardt, mm. and maybe even the sort of jazzio guys that are around that. You know the way Charlie. they played. In order to have to be heard within a big yeah. ensemble yeah, without yeah, amplification, yeah. yeah, that doesn't really exist anymore. You don't really meet players who can really do that anymore. No. Get so those big notes acoustically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, don't get me wrong. I'm not. You know, I don't. There's no. There's no reason to feel negative about the death of rock and roll. It's not, I don't think it's dying. Well, I, I think it will. I think it. No, I, mean, I, I think don't. It is. I, think I think it, it might is. change, but I don't think it, I, it's not dying for me. No, because we've got this room and we can play really loud. Yeah, I no, I, I don't think Sam Fender. Listen, I think there's a, oh, there's right. a there's a bunch of stuff coming through that I you know I listen to when I put Radio One on, and I hear. You know, that there's some really great things coming through. That is, it does feel loud and. Yeah. Uh, connected. Well, um, perhaps the way music has always happened is it has gone around. Yeah. And it needs to kind of almost die before it's rediscovered again. Sure. Like, the 90s was just, for me, the most glorious time to be a 16 year old. Right. In 1990. Right. Because look at the bands that came out in 1991, 92, 93, 94. Mm. You went from Pearl Jam to The Chilies to Soundgarden to Alice in Chains. And then, okay, then we got into the Britpop stuff, but that was awesome as well. Yeah. Lots of guitar front and centre of everything after that really overblown synth decade of the 80s. You might say it started with Guns N' Roses, to be fair, who brought rock in, back into a sort of public mm. uh, acceptance that wasn't kind of widdly shred stuff, which was also awesome, by the way. Mm. But... Uh, you know, it had kind of completely gone away during the 80s. There was hair metal, but it wasn't in any way. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe Bon Jovi were pretty big in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Slippery when wet. Yeah. It changed. And so then... maybe, maybe rock is dead then, because there's no Bon Jovi in the charts at the moment, is there? <laughs> you wouldn't know that going to one of their gigs, though. <laughs> Man. I don't know. Maybe it's always been diverse. Maybe that's just the truth and we don't notice. And don't forget, though, the way people are consuming music has changed. Yeah. It has changed just 
completely. Well, there's no funnel anymore, is there? No, it's exactly. A, it's a scattergun. Look, I, you know, I was doing, re, you know, the the Tin Spirits was a was a a prog. Um, it was unique in the sense that, uh, you know, it's you'd never hear it. The, songs are fifteen minutes long, and you know. Yeah. However, there was still an audience for that stuff. You know, if we had done that twenty years ago, I mean, we've been laughed at. You know, but now you can. You can. You can find an audience. You can find an audience yeah, now, yeah, and that's, that's true. Yeah, and yeah. that's I think. They don't want to come to gigs though, because it's easier to stay at home and drink wine. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get people out, unless you're John Mayer. On the subject of John Mayer. Um, Kong, he's commented. Kong seventy nine UK says, "What are the chances of getting John Mayer in for a chat when he's over in October?" Um, I would say Little slightly none. less than zero. I would imagine. If he does anything, it will be Anderton's. Uh, I think we're some way down the list for Mr. Mayer. Unless Mr. Mayer, you want to throw a complete curveball and just yeah. come on that pill it, show? It's it's yeah, it's really really unlikely. Um, Jürgen van der Burt says, "Post punk guys." I don't know if that means now or when the, ever the last time punk was post punk, but yeah, yeah, you're right. There is there is loads of um, Kirk Pono says '90s was the death of rock and roll. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we're all just being too dramatic about it because it threatens our egos too much. Maybe. I just I don't see the death thing. I don't see where the death thing comes into it. I see it changing and I see it broadening. Well, every guitar player I know says they can't play loud on stage anymore. That's a death. Yeah. That is that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't get depressed though, Dan. No, I'm no. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> guitar, uh, Guffer guitar music says still got the three three five. Then Mick, yes, I do. It's over there. I don't know if you can see that in the picture. Um, I would. I did have some crazy notion of selling all my guitars and buying a vintage Strat. That's not going to happen. Um, for lots of reasons. But yeah. Not the least of which, your Blue Strat is, is an amazing guitar. It's adequate at the moment. What's your favourite first pedal, Dan, says Jamie Darko. Uh, my favourite first pedal, oh boy, oh boy. Many for many different reasons. Uh, I'm, my Analog Man Red Dot NKT Sunface that I'm using at the moment does exactly what I need it to do, uh, but I'm using it in a slightly different way. I'm using it as a pr like a pre-boost into the overdrives. If you see my pedal board show, it, it, I, I run through it, but I adore that pedal in that position. It just works so beautifully for me. But I've got my um, uh, my black box uh, duo fuzz, which is astonishing. Um, I've got, actually, I was playing with uh, Pig Dog Pedals uh, released a, it's like a, not a Fender Blender, it's a, uh, oh, it's not a harmonic percolator, what's it called? The Burt Buzz Around, the Buzz Around pedal. Um, is that what the Bumble Buzz is? I don't believe so. This thing from mm. um, Third Man. No, I don't believe so. I think that, no. The, uh, it's this, um, Robert Fripp. Do you mean the buzz around that was the Roland thing? Didn't they do a buzz around something or other? Uh, n no, they did a. Um, oh, the Roland thing was a. I can't remember. Anyway, it's the the this three knob fuzz, and Robert Fripp used it a lot. And anyway, that thing is, sounds astonishing. Um, but there's loads. I, I, really, I can't say favorite fuzz. There's like. Many for many different reasons, but at the moment, the one that's on my board is the Analog Man uh, Sunface, which is glorious. I love it. Analog Man. Mm. Uh, Burns did the buzz around, according to Stuart Tate. Burns exactly. Check out so Tate's effects. Is, that's who Stuart Tate is. So this is a um, a reproduction of the Burns buzz around. Right, Burns. That's what we were looking yeah. for. I, so I say I, I I remember it from Burt because anyway. That's how my brain works. But burns buzz around, yes. Andy Hitchens, what bike do you have, Mick? I have a Ducati Multistrada 1200 Enduro. And I enjoyed it verily on the way to work this morning. 
Uh, do you ride fast? Are you one of those no. guys that goes... <clears throat> and then... No. No? no. The, the, the term for riding a motorcycle is making progress. Okay. So I make progress, but no. I don't ride fast. Okay. I'm... I'm I'm heartened to hear it. Yeah, you can't. It's a bit dumb to ride f too fast. Well, dumb to drive too fast. Yeah, it's not not good. You might be fine, but other road users are alarmed. Sure. And it causes them to make mistakes. It's, it's not the way. It's not the way to do it, Dan. Um. Okay. Rock and roll will survive if the song lyrics are like the drivel on social media. Says Ooh. pterodactyl spontaneous. Uh, Joe B, Ducatisti for the win. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Is, uh, guitars are American. Right. Wine is French. Cars are German. Motorcycles are Italian. That's the way it works. Fair enough. Amps, Dan? What are amps? Ah, uh, boy. They are a, they're a trade deal done between Britain and America. I like it. Yeah. And it was an all-encompassing trade deal, and there was lots of back and forth. and But, but it ended up with everyone happy, uh, and m magic and history was changed, which is exactly how I see the label. I just think that's wonderful. And Marcello Durham, let's, let's top off the is music dead thing. He says, music doesn't die. It just goes out of the mainstream. Yeah, of course it does. Of course it does. Um, Mick, are you a Dovi supporter? Kind of, kind of, kind of. I like MotoGP, but I love Valentino Rossi so much and Mark Marquez that uh, I wouldn't go by brand necessarily for MotoGP. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, we should get back to... Uh, we should get back to some questions. Okay. Right, let's finish this week's question, shall we? Um, sure. Adam Miller wants us to move our regular Friday show to Thursday because it fits better with his schedule. And he wrote a very long <laughs> comment saying why it would work for him. Uh, and Adam, we feel you. and We're sorry that Friday doesn't work for you. Um, but if the, all I would say is if we move it to a Thursday, then some other people are going to want it on a Wednesday or a Tuesday. The good news is it goes onto YouTube and it stays there. You can watch it whenever you want. Kind of forever. Yeah. You know, at least until YouTube decides it doesn't want to post our videos anymore. In which case we're all off. Um, Ramon says, love the show. Hey guys, I like the plugins that I use on my door, but I also like to hear the sound of the amp in the room. If I were to use an ABY pedal at the start of my signal chain, one output going to the signal chain and the other straight to the audio interface, should I place a buffer before the ABY pedal, after the ABY pedal, or just leave it without a buffer? The ABY is passive. Um, Dan will probably answer this more fully than me, but the buffer is the least of your problems if you're using an ABY to split into a door and a regular amp. Your first problem is going to be considerable latency, probably. So if you're listening to the two things, you'll need an audio interface that corrects for that, which you can't put it forward in time so your amp is always going to be out of whack with what you're hearing back through the, the door probably yeah. and also that that latency isn't set it can change depending on um, so one of the things I've noticed with the Zoya is that depending on um, the, the amount of processing whatever it is the latency changes mm. so I yeah I don't know if you can get it consistent. Um, consistent. I mean, yeah, it's... You, I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem. It's, it's, it is a problem. Depending on your interface and how many plugins you're using, you might find that it's so low to be utterly imperceptible for use to their playing. Um, it's only when you come to mix it that you'll notice the one of them slightly out. Anyway, that's fine, because you can just correct that. Uh, to answer the question about the buffer, it depends what effects you're running and... Uh, you should have a high impedance input on your um, uh, door, depending on what door it is. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't necessarily need a buffer unless you want one for the sound. Is that fair, Dan? Very fair. But people get really worried about buffers. Yeah. If if you if your ABY pedal is passive, 
but you're hitting it with a low impedance signal, you'll be fine. Mm. Um, so ah, of course, they might not be in phase as well, which is the other issue. That's the other issue. So you might want an ABY that is active so that it can flip the phase. Well, no, you can... As long as it's a transformer isolated output, you can flip the phase with it on the transformer. Yeah, okay. And so it can still be passive. Right. But the transformer, you flip the phase on the transformer and it's fine. So you hit that with a low impedance signal and it will drive that. Because the other thing with, a, with a, a passive ABY is that when you split the signal, it, it gets loaded. So... Um, is that why there's a buffer in the Humdinger? Yes. Aha. Uh-huh. Yep. Yes. So just so that it keeps that keeps the signals coming up. Um, you genuinely do learn something every day when you hang around Dan. Yeah, but there are. But if if we got rid of that buffer and we just and I assume that you always had a pedal on or or a boss pedal in your chain or something on before it, that'd be fine. That's fine because that's yeah that's doing the job. Yeah. Interesting, but yeah. So when you're splitting any signal in the guitar world and you want to listen to them both at the same time you need to think about phase uh, you need to think about ground loop hum yep. um, and most ABY devices if they're good will help you solve both of those problems there you go what do you got Dan why are you laughing if you, I've, I've learned something tell me I think you may have already done it if you do that it stops stops it oh okay <clears throat> and then if you do that it keeps going again uh Boy. Simon Williams, Tin Rattislaw, and Mr. Anderson59 want to know if it's possible to use the tube amp expander or the aux with a combo amplifier. And by that, they mean a combo amplifier that has the speaker hardwired. It is possible, but you need to break the connection between the amplifier and the speaker. Um, I've done it in the AC30 so that I could use the power station with that. Uh, but yeah. It is absolutely possible, but you need to be a bit careful. Yeah, so the speaker wire that comes out the bottom of your amp, if it's hardwired, you would need to cut that, you would need to attach a jack socket to it, and then you could connect the, uh, yeah, then you can connect another speaker, or in this case the tube amp expander, and then a speaker to it. So it is possible. Um, if you're not good with electronics, please get that done by somebody who knows what they're doing, um, not least because you could kill your amp if you don't have a proper load Correct. when you turn it on. Yep. Uh, and, you know other general uh, danger of electrocution and stuff when messing around in the back of an amplifier. Mm. So yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, get someone else to do it. But yes, it is perfectly possible just to modify that hardwired speaker output to have a connector on it. Yeah. Some uh, some combos have the speaker, you know, in, in the combos, wired uh, on a plug into the back of the amplifier. Yeah, and most that situation actually, is, is, is really simple. Yeah, most it's already on the plug. And some actually, I've seen a, a handful of combos that have an internal speaker defeat switch. So right. when you plug an exten- extension speaker in, you can defeat the internal. Uh, it's not very common, that, to be fair. Uh, Ian Houston says, Superb episode. I've been hankering um, after there was a tube amp expander since I saw one at the guitar show in Birmingham. The only thing I haven't been able to answer before pushing the button is, can my... Uh, G2 could try the MIDI side of things on the Wazza. I'm not sure what the MIDI size of things on the Wazza is. Can you do presets? Yeah. There are presets. Yeah, yeah. so in that case, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can go into the... Uh, the... the not, not the app, is it? On the, on the... You wouldn't call that an app, would you? Interface? The interface on the, on the computer. And... There's a place near Swinton called Interface. Is there? Yeah, if you go across the roundabout over to... Wouldn't bass, bass it. <laughs> There's a the danger of doing live. You might do a sweary. Um, on the left, there's a place called Interface. And I can just imagine a load of people in suits sat around in like 1993 going, we need to name this something really modern. I know, Interface. Something that's in your face. Ah. Um, yeah, so you'd be able to control all the, all the MIDI settings and stuff on the, on the computer. Those are the kind of things that get edited out of the regular show, by the way. How long have we been going for? Is there a way to see? Not long enough. I think we're in. We're in for the day, Dan. Okay. We're, we've been going an hour. Till YouTube phones us up and goes, could you please stop this? You're killing our bandwidth. Yeah. We're having to cut off the country to certain... <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, Grant Verstat. Hello, Grant. I don't know if it's Verstat or Verstat, but you comment a lot, and we like your comments, Grant. Thank you. Um... A, well done on the Fletcher Munson curve. 
something that doesn't get talked about enough, in my opinion. It impacts on a lot of things. B, question for Daniel. Are they Sennheiser Momentum 2 headphones? If so, what do you think? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, and I think they're fantastic. I really, really like them. Simon really likes them too. Mm. Yeah, he has them. Yeah, great. Yeah, good, good. Um, and C, damn, how good is that matchless when it can be pushed a bit? That. Dan's currently very fizzy about the matchless. That. It is magic. It is, it is a magic thing. Yep. I... I can't ever see myself playing without it. <laughs> well, I that, just can't. Well, it's, but the thing is, having that in my rig has just changed yeah. everything for to me. To be fair, it is the amp you've used for the longest period of time I've ever known you. Yeah. It's almost a month now. <laughs> I adore it. The, I use the EF86 side on that specifically. Um, we did a show... Uh, a while ago, I was showing how we split the the four channel input and go into one side. So what I might do with the wet dry side of that is run the other side into the twelve eight seven, to, just for the delays and mix those in. But man alive, it is a uh, big big shout out to down um, to the guys at Matchless and Phil. to Phil Jamison and um, I mean they you know making. And consistently wonderful, wonderful amplifiers, and that's as as magic as I could, you know. It's crazy ever. good. Yeah, it is it's wonderful. Crazy good. Really wonderful. The first, the two DC thirties that I heard. One, I remember walking into. Uh, I was about fifteen years old, maybe, maybe sixteen. Evershot Village Hall, which is a little village near where I lived. And Robbie McIntosh was playing with a band, like a blues band. Right. And he'd recently, I think he, maybe it was a bit later than that. Anyway, whenever it was, he'd recently stopped using, or for that night he was using a DC-30. And I remember walking in going, wow, that, that is three-dimensional. Right. That is, I've never heard that before that thing that I'm hearing at mm. this moment. And then Neville from Guitarist, I should honk Robbie. <laughs> and I should honk Neville. Um, got one, DC-30. And I would say that DC-30 is among the top three best sounding guitar, amp guitar amps I have ever heard in my life. And by best, I mean most preferable. Sure. Just amazing amplifiers. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, the Fly 06 says, how would lowering the master volume on the matchless compare to using an attenuator? Uh, the that. master volume on the matchless is, uh, you know, it's, it's really good, but it's, uh, using an attenuator is different because you're getting the, the overdrive. I think we need to look at that. I think we need to, we get some different examples of different sorts of master volumes and then we look at attenuation um yeah they all have their, their advantages and disadvantages broadly speaking at the same volume um if you've got the master up and you've got the attenuator working quite hard you'll have a lot of power amp power section overdrive if you have the master low and the attenuator off you don't have any power amp overdrive so it's that it's just how much overdrive are you getting from the power section of mm -hmm. the amp mm -hmm. basically is yep. the answer to the question, I think. Um, also, what happened to those Ruby Celestians? Um, we had two Celestian Ruby, Alnico Rubies, which is the 35 watt Alnico. You've got the blue, you had the gold, and then the cream, the Ruby slots in between the blue, blue and the gold. And the gold mm -hmm. Yes. So 15 watts, 50 watts, and so now it's 15, 35, 50. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't like them, did we? No. Too no, dark sounding. Very dark sounding speaker. So I'm going to try them on the uh, Plexi. Because the Plexi oh, yeah, really, right. really, really, really needs a t some sparkle attenuation. Yeah, right. If that you could want work. to use the high treble channel, that could work. Yeah, but they didn't do work with the matchless. Just a bit, bit warm sounding. Mm -hmm. And Dan likes treble and presence. Ryan Hill thought uh, says just a thought, but I would be interested in comparing a crank amp with attenuation versus a standard amp with drive pedals. What are the differences, if any, pure amp drive versus pedals at a similar volume? Uh, yeah. Sure. 
I mean, we have done it before yeah. a bunch of times. There, there's a lot of um, kind of emotional investment in Cranked Amps. Yeah. Lots of people were, sort of, again, very didactic about it and very kind of, you know, pedal sound rubbish and Cranked Amps sound brilliant. And there's, there's, that's quite common. You know you can do both, though, right? Viewpoint. Yeah, that's the point. It's about... This is this. It's not black and white. It's no, a big exactly. grey area, people. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of people may be quite confused about that. But the magic spot, usually, if if we could define it as such, is an amp that's going into that world, pushed by pedals that are helping. There you go. And it's just problem with a cranked amp is that's all you've got. Yeah. Apart from if you turn the volume down on your guitar. Yeah. Um, whereas a high headroom amp with pedals, you've just got so much more that you can do. Maybe you've got 99 things you don't want. Yes. Whereas with the crank amp, you've got the one, one thing, thing that, yeah. that you do want. So yep. it's personal preference, yeah. isn't it? And what you like. But also, the, there's a... There's a combination of finding the... the you've, The first thing, you've got to find the amp that connects with you. And, and once you find... like So, I remember... You know, when you first found the Lone Star, and that those sounds really worked for you, and then you got the tube screamers and the things that worked with that combination. It's one thing that I mean, we've said from the very first show: pedals don't make a sound; they just they're part of the process. They they interact with what's coming out here, here, then there, and then in the amplifier. But if that if the amp isn't right. No pedals in the world are going to fix that. So you've got to start with that, yeah, yeah. you know, the thing that's, kind of, that's actually amplifying that sound. Mm. Because if you connect with that, then, look, there are, I don't know how many pedals we have here. I guarantee you bring any amp in here and we'll be able to find something that works with it. Yeah. You know, um, but that's for me, it's finding that amplifier that, that you connect with. Because I'm, look, Angus didn't use any pedals apart from the, the preamp in his wireless. But I'm sure if we'd taken a, a like a treble booster or something, just have a play on this, it would have sounded awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, if it's finding things that, that work with the, that, that, the way you have your amp set. Yeah, and of course what you do today doesn't have to be what you do tomorrow. Exactly. Or next week, it's all a journey, isn't it? And today you might like this and next week you might like the option of that. To wit, Manuel to Bastian it. says, I know this is a show about pedals, but Dan, your sound with the amp cranked was so much better than it usually is with pedals. There you go. He preferred the sound of uh, the matchless instead of drive pedals. Okay. Yeah. Again, I think there's a lot of emotional investment in that. Yeah. I think people have a romanticism about it. Just like we do with tube amps, by the way. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I, it's an amazing sound, cranked. But, you know, for me... You'd need five amps. I'd need... Well, I'd have... <laughs> you know, I've got to have my tape delays. Yeah. And the modulation that I love, and then that... that The fuzz input, you know, that, that I love. There's a bunch of things that, um, you know... A handful of pedals gives me a real broad range of, of, of sounds I can choose from. With the crank thing, I've got different levels of, levels of gain. Different levels of and the same thing. Yeah. yeah, and that's cool, but I, I need more than that. Yeah, it can be quite liberating to do that, can't it? Yeah. Funnily enough, I'm gonna, I'm, with all the fuzz problems I've been having recently, I just can't seem to get the fuzz to sit right in the board. So I'm going to plug in the fuzz face, Dan Drive, and my analog man straight into the plexi. Right with the strat and I'm just going to listen and see if I'm remembering this in some sort of weird uh, romantic way that doesn't okay. actually exist sure but if it does exist then we're going to have to work out how to make that work in the board sure because at the moment it just doesn't there's something about the input and the output impedances about the way that it's interacting with everything else that's just making fuzz not not do that thing could okay. be the wrong pedal could be something else so I think I'm going to start off by Going back to the source and going, am I am I remembering this correctly? Is the first question. Sure. Yeah, but because this and the Strat and the Marshall mm. and the volume control on the Strat is just magic. It's all it's all there. Sure. Anyway, slight tangent. Overdrive pedals, amps, working together. Yeah, no, I love a play. 
because there's so many different variables. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. Stuart Bolwell says, well, that's two for two this week. Great show, guys. Great info, great playing, great sounds. You get guys just keep getting better. A couple of questions for VCQ. Any plans afoot for that pedal show live uh, tour in various UK locations? I'd like to do that. I'd like to do it with a guest. Yeah, would be great. Would be nice. Trouble we've done with it, all the live things we've done. We've been extremely grateful to the people that have come out. Thank you very much. Um, they take an enormous amount of work and we end up losing money is the, is the absolute barefaced truth of the yep. matter. So we don't want to lose money because every pound we get goes into producing this show. Yeah. So I know it's really boring and not very rock and roll, but I'm not a massive fan of losing money. So maybe yeah, yeah. if we could find a way for it to pay and actually get people out. Because it is hard getting people out. There's a lot of great things to go and see. Mm. What am I going to go and see tomorrow? Michael Landau or that pedal show live? Mm. <laughs> yep, Isn't good it? point. Yep. Maybe. So, I don't know. There's, there will be a way to do it. Um, but, yeah. And they're great. Don't get us wrong. They are great fun. We've really loved doing them. The one mm. we did with Joey was off the scale. Epic. Amazing. Actually, we didn't lose money on that one. Maybe that's because Joey was there. Maybe. Which Maybe brings us back to what you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Um, uh, Chris Covington says, you should make that vlog, Mick. I'm going to do that. Um, Freak Brother says, how are your ears doing? Any tips on ear protection? How are your ears, Dan? Yeah, my, my, ears, my ears are, are good, actually. I've had them tested recently. Um, I had a scare... I was, we were, I was playing with Doug somewhere and it was a quiet rehearsal and then he launches into Moby Dick and it was for a couple of months after that I was like, I was, wasn't sure what was going on, but then I've had them tested and they're fine. But now ear protection is a thing. I, I do now um, I've got a couple of different um, little attenuated ear things that I, that I wear to, to loud things. I always wear them at gigs. Yeah. And I, I wear them on the bike as well. It's not actually the engine noise on the bike, it's the wind noise. Really? Just, yeah, it's um, pretty... Because it's, it's constant and it's at a particular frequency, it's quite painful. So definitely wear them on the bike, definitely wear them at gigs. Um, but I physically can't play them when playing the guitar. I right. can't wear them because I just... Yeah, no, I'm the same. It doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah, I'm And the same. I think hearing's pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, still do audio production work and... Can still hear high frequency, I think. Huh? You're the man. Um, Guffer Guitar Music says, Mick, is this since you changed pickups the problem with the first? No, because I haven't changed pickups yet. I am going to do that as well, I promise. Um, what was the app that you were using when you. Was it the. You were using Lone Stars before? No, the, sound, the, the first sound that I like is a first face into a Marshall. Right, okay. Yeah, I didn't. To be honest, before I met you, I didn't really use fuzzies. Um, because I find that if you get it didn't exist at the time but if you take something like the Thorpey Warthog mm. and you hit that into something else that can be fuzzy enough for me sure yeah right that it, it, you sort of it, it mushes out into something approximating fuzz but doesn't give you all the problems of fuzz however just a decent fuzz face into a Marshall and the volume control A it's the most beautiful clean sound in the world mm. You know, in many thing. respects, give me that over a 65 Deluxe Reverb yeah, any right. day of the week. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's such an amazing clean sound. Um, but getting that to happen in other amps and with other pedals has been a problem. Somebody says, uh, try a different fuzz, Mick. Matt, I cannot tell you how many fuzz pedals Dan and I own. It's pretty much all of them. And it's certainly most of them. Yeah. Not a so lot of them. Um, we do, we do, we do have a lot of fuzz pedals. Um... And someone else said, is that fuzz face true bypass? I'm just trying to find that. Um, no, of course it's not. Jorgen van der Berg. Is it, the true bypass thing is interesting. Mm. Lots of people are always like, yeah, but it's not true bypass. As if Dan and I would care if it's true bypass or not. Mm -hmm. How much do you care if pedals are true bypass, Dan? Well, I don't, because I've got everything in. Switcher. Boom. Yeah. It only matters if it affects the pedal to the left or right of it. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it doesn't matter. Klon's not true bypass. No. Best sounding overdrive I've ever owned in my life, ever, ever. That's good buffer in the Klon as well. Yeah, exactly. A um, couple more. 
Analog Man has the answer, Matt. Uh, Mick says Matt Church. Yeah, I know. I've got various sun, three sun faces, um, and they are definitely the closest ah. yet. Magic. Definitely. Um, I saw him in New York. Did you? How's he doing? He's great. Yeah, good. Really, really good. Yeah. Really good. It's nice to catch up. Uh, yeah, legend. He is a good dude. Really great Mike dude. Mike Analog Man we're talking about. Um... You cannot end the show without addressing Dan's pants, says Daniel Wilson. Oh, we've addressed them. We've addressed them in... <laughs> in Mustard trousers. Mustard trousers. <gasps> I... <laughs> Joe no. P. Stains. Joe B. says, true bypass the comments, perhaps. Ooh. No, we can't do that. No, Is that you, Joe? Are you secretly watching this? You hate pedals, but you're a secret that pedal show watcher. That's what it is, isn't it? We love Joe Bonamassa, by the way. Oh, I love Joe Bonamassa. Um, Jake Tone, Jake Tone says, "Guys, I'm watching this on a plane." No, no way. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Paul says these are banana bending pants. Uh, Mark Queen's well, says, banana Cry bender, the... Queenslander. So I am a Queenslander. I'm proud of it. Mark well, I'm a proud of being a Queenslander. Why well, is anyone proud from anywhere they come from anyway? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Yeah, that is a really good question. Um, Americans, very often, very proud of, like, if they come from this state. I did a gig. Or this one here. I used to, well, I used to do a gig in, in, in Cardiff. I did, the, like, every Friday night for, for years and years. And the Welsh, again, fiercely patriotic... And we had a, every week we had a guy you know, asking for stereophonics or Tom Jones or whatever. And this guy said, play, play stereophonics. I said, do you like stereophonics? He goes, no, I don't like music, but they're Welsh. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that, there you go. amazing, yeah. amazing. He, they were almost Scottish Welsh there, I think, but that's all right. Well, it's, I, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Indian Scottish accent. It's the one accent I do that covers a vast amount of territory. Dean Slagter. And I promise you that's how it's written. Slagged her. Whose goat is that jacket? Might be Slaughter. Has Mick bought any more camo shoes? Uh, no, I did buy some vans with flames on the other day. Um, They're awesome. We did, we did a Gretsch video and I thought what you need for a Gretsch video is vans with flames on. Got them in the outlet store. Um, Mustard Trousers is like a Frank Zappa song, says Michael Krause. Ragged Company Recording says, I love the subdued vibes of a Monday. It is Monday, isn't it? It doesn't it feel Monday. like Monday. Man, we're getting so many comments. Okay, I guess we should probably think about bringing this to a close. Mm. Boss SD1 Pants, says Stephen Alva. Let's see. Let's see how close they are. I think they're more mustard. Uh, oh. Sean Perrieria says, how much for the high watt? It's not for sale. We're never going to sell it. It's uh, signed by Harry Joyce. It's 973. It's really lovely. Um, so, yeah, we won't sell that. That's the SD1. Yeah. The, the pop and peel, that's not right, but then we have the yeah, mud honey. The mud honey, that's pretty close, yeah, pretty close, pretty close, pretty close. There was an old boss orange thing from the no, uh, Michael Moore, really enjoy your documentaries, says. <laughs> <laughs> Just got my G2. Dan, should I run my fuzz before the G2? No, put it in loop one. Yeah, put it in loop one. Apparently, uh, so the loop won't affect the input or output. There's no impedance. buffers. No, no, it won't. Um, put it in loop one, says Dan. Uh, oh. oh, I think the colour is close to the 335 of your, of your trousers. That's that's the closest yet, I think. Kind of. Yeah, I'm camouflaging into vintage Gibson. If only it was a vintage Gibson. Um, the JHS on the back wall looks like a good uh, trouser match. Did you get the uh, phaser out, by the way? The phaser? Yeah. The phaser 100. I did. I did. Oh, it's too orange. Try that one. Try it's that too one. orange. Too orangey for crows. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll keep okay. looking. All right. Um, Marshall faceplate. Actually, that's that is quite close. That's yes. yeah, there you go. Plexi, there you go. plexi pants. What could be cooler than that? Yeah, very plexi good. Plexi pants. Um, 
Yes. There we go. And still they come in. Volante, actually that's a pretty good shout. They are kind of goldy, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Um, still don't have one. Freak Brothers Plexi Pants. Yeah. They are Plexi Pants from this moment forward. Great. Okay. Um, shall we bring this to a close, Daniel? We shall. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Tell us where the men hold you. <laughs> Let's move along. Um, uh, what is this? That pants show? Yes. Uh, nice show, guys. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We're going to do this. We're going to figure out how to do it better um, and keep doing it. Cool. For VCQ, yeah? Yeah. We were going to do it as a podcast only, but I think uh, that's now not going to happen. Cheers, guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.